Hi, everybody. I'm so excited to bring you guys your midweek mentor this week. Uh, feel free to share the link and share the love, start a watch party, or even just share with anybody that you think might appreciate this topic. So let's jump in. I know that right now we find ourselves in some pretty odd times in the world, and I'm sure most of you, if you have any school-age children, are uh, finding yourselves essentially forced into schooling at home, which can be very overwhelming, I'm sure, especially if it's not something that you ever planned for. And if you're working from home, which I know a lot of people are, it can be probably very hard to find a balance in that. Um, so I just really, it was put on my heart to share some encouragement with you guys. So that's what I want to do. Um, but before I do that, I want to share a little bit about myself with you guys. Uh, so if you do not know me, hi, my name is Shallon. I have been a part of Lifeline for about 13 years now, and me and my husband have been married for almost 12 years, and we have two beautiful daughters. Uh, Amelia is almost 10, and Madeline is four. My husband works a full-time out-of-the-house job, and I stay home with my family. Um, it does look a little bit different right now, obviously, because things are different right now. Um, but we are both also in school and um, over the last few years I have had a different number of children in the home that I have helped to take care of and we are also wrapping up our fourth year of schooling at home so for us it's something that we have been doing for a while it's not something that we were um, it didn't just fall into our laps like most of you have right now um, but I do remember in those beginning stages of feeling very overwhelmed. And to be completely honest, it's still very overwhelming a lot of the time. And so I know that if I have my own struggles, that there are many of you that are out there struggling also. And so I felt like um, I had some maybe tips that I could share with you guys that might help you help you in this new season that you find yourselves in. So there are four main things that I want to share with you guys. And then there will be smaller things broken off inside of that just to help you guys understand a little bit better. And so the first thing that I wanna talk about is perspective slash attitude, right? And uh, so in the midst of this, I have heard a lot of different narratives from different people such as, um, I'm so thankful for teachers and I'm so overwhelmed right now and my kids are driving me crazy and uh, I can't wait for them to go back to school. <laughs> and while I can absolutely relate with all of those things, because I go crazy all the time. <laughs> um, but I think a shift in our perspective is really important because our words are very important and they hold a lot of power. And so what what's happening in the world right now and the circumstances that we have found ourselves in, they're not likely going to happen again, hopefully. <laughs> Right. So if we can just shift our thinking a little bit to, I get to be home with my kids. I get to be their teacher. I get to pour and invest in them right now. It's a great opportunity to spend that quality time with your children. It's a time where you get to work side by side with them and possibly even identify maybe some struggles that they're having, whether it's academically, um, socially, spiritually, emotionally, um, and just really sit by their side and support them uh, through those things. So it's also a great opportunity for you to work on your, your relationship with your children and even for siblings to uh, re really cultivate that relationship between your siblings. And honestly, one of my absolutely favorite things about schooling at home is the relationship that my two daughters have. Um, they, are, they have such a special, rich relationship, even being six years apart. And I, I pray that it's something that lasts for their entire lifetime. Um, I cherish it very much. So if you're like me, you might struggle a little bit with feeling qualified <laughs> to be your kid's teacher. <laughs> Sometimes I don't feel qualified but I know that that is a lie. And let me be the one to tell you that there is no one more qualified to be your children's teacher than you. 
Uh, it's God's grace and strength is what provides it provides me with what I need every day to lay down my selfishness because I'm very selfish, my impatience because I'm very impatient, and my perfectionism, um, so that I can honor Him in my home. He lets He helps me to let go of the expectations that I have for what my day is supposed to look like, so that I can replace that with imitating Him and delighting in my children. He asks me to faithfully wake up and give him my day, to trust him with the tasks that he has given to me and know that he is in charge of those results. It's easier said than done <laughs> because I struggle with all of these things, all of them. Um, I can be very controlling with my time and my schedule, um, but it's such a joy that my success and my failure does not rest on my perfection. Um, just my faithfulness to him. Um, I have a scripture for you guys. It is Psalm 51, 17. It says, The sacrifice that you desire is a broken spirit. You will not reject a broken and repentant heart, O oh God. Wow, I love that so much. <laughs> because I fail often. Uh, I am so broken. And so pointing back to what I just said is, uh, you know, what he really wants from us is to faithfully live our days for him. So that's very beautiful. The second and third things that I want to talk about kind of go together and it's block scheduling and routine versus rhythm. Now, as I kind of already said, I am kind of a crazy psycho schedule loving person. <laughs> I know that not everyone is like that and that is okay. It's probably a good thing um, because it's really something that I wrestle with God a lot about. Um, that control. And I really struggle with that. Um, so everything that I'm saying right now, I'm truly saying to myself. <laughs> um, but I do think that schedules are helpful, especially for kids. Um, they need to know what's happening that day. They need to know what's expected of them, especially under the circumstances right now. I'm sure that your children are feeling just as much um, anxious and overwhelmed as you are, if not more than you. Probably more. <laughs> so <clears throat> when I'm creating a schedule for my family, I like to keep a few things in mind. One, important things first. Two, relationships are high priority. Number three, budget margin. And number four, delayed gratification. So break those down for you guys a little bit. Here's what I mean. Number one, important things first. This is where block scheduling comes in. I try and list out the most important things to me, um, for me and my family. This is not going to look the same for everybody. That's okay. Yours are going to be different from mine. That's okay. Um, but for an example, some important things for me and my family is schoolwork, obviously. Um, reading out loud together as a family every day, something that's very important to us. Being outside, having a one-on-one -on -one time with each of my children, quiet time every day. <laughs> And having um, alone time with my husband at the end of the day. And occasionally feeding my kids. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Uh, so how do I make that happen? <clears throat> I usually have to work backwards. So knowing that I want to have alone time with my husband at the end of the day, that means that my kids need to be in bed on time. <clears throat> that my kids need to be in bed on time, right? In order for my kids to be in bed on time, they need to have their uh, they need to have their teeth brushed, their pajamas on. Um, that means that dinner needs to be done by a certain time, which means that I have to plan for that. Um, I also know that I function best in the mornings. And so that's the best time for us to do our schoolwork. So I block off all that time in the evening and all that time in the morning. And I try my best to not allow disturbances during those times. I block them off. It doesn't always work that way. I am not perfect, nobody is perfect, but that is what I, I aim for. Um, so that brings me to number two, which our relationships are high priority. And, and number three, uh, budget, budget margin, those kind of go together also. So it doesn't take much for our days to get off track. I'm sure you guys all um, can agree with that. Um, if you're like me and you have a toddler at home, or multiple toddlers, or even a baby, you know that um, there's a lot that you can't plan for. 
if someone's having a tough day, which is highly likely every day, <laughs> schedules are going to start to fold. So while schoolwork is important, my child and their emotional and spiritual needs are more important. <clears throat> Sadly, I can say from experience that that has not always been the case for us. Um, and it leads to not only destruction in our days, but um, in my relationships with my children. And that makes me very grateful for my Savior and that His grace and strength is made known in my weaknesses, which are many. I get, um, about a year ago, I got some really great practical advice from a friend of mine. And it was so simple, but it was just to pause in those moments of utter chaos with our kids and invite Jesus into it to ask him, what does my child need right now? What do you want me to do right now? And I can tell you that he does come through. He has always come through. Um, I want to pause right there and just interject a little bit of practical, um, some practical things that I do try to do to avoid derailing. And one of those is, um, to have one-on-one -on -one time with my toddler before our school day starts. What that does is it fills her love tank and then it uh, helps her to go away and confidently play independently on her own so that I can direct my attention to my older child and her schoolwork. Another useful tip is to have designated school time toys so that um, it's an opportunity to distract them with something that they don't always get to play with. So it's more exciting. Um, and again, it helps you concentrate on your older kids' lessons while the little ones can play. So um, some ideas that we use for that is I have little bins that we just pull out for those times of day. And they have things in them like Lincoln Logs, Kinetic Sand, Magnetiles, um, things like that. And then... Um, of course, my toddler, she's always welcome to come and sit and color at the table with us while we're doing schoolwork, um, as long as she's able to do that somewhat quietly. So that leads me into budgeting margin. And that's just what it says that it is. Leave space in your schedule for things to come up or go wrong, because they will go wrong. <laughs> I'm sure you can all relate. As soon as we get started with a math lesson, my toddler will fall down and get hurt and start crying. And then by the time that I can calm her down, someone needs a snack and then someone needs a diaper change. And then someone asks for a drink and then they spill it. And then the dogs start barking at the mailman. It's just, it just goes on and on. And you guys know what I mean. It's just the way that it is. Um, so if we can plan for that, we're more likely to stay calm and respond rather than react. Because if you grow impatient and anxious, that creates an anxious environment, which makes your children impatient and anxious. But if we as the adults can plan for the unknown um, budget margin and respond rather than react, it's going to make a huge difference in everyone's attitudes. So for example, if a math lesson requires 30 minutes of your time, plan for 45 minutes or even an hour. And then if you end up with extra time, Bonus Jonas. <laughs> and then number four is delayed gratification. What I mean by this is that I want my kids to have something that they're constantly working towards. When they wake up in the morning, um, they know what's expected of them. And they know that school comes first and playtime is later. It's just the way that we set up our days. Uh, when they know that they're not allowed to play with their Legos or um, um, have their sibling time or go outside and play or watch a movie, play games, those kinds of things, it gives them something to look forward to. Not only does it help them focus on the task that's at hand, it helps motivate them to do it and do it well. And then it makes free time so much more enjoyable. And it cuts down on that boredom time where they're, you know, looking for things to do. Um, so if my kids woke up right away and just started playing with their toys, it would be torture to get them to come and sit down to begin school. So by knowing what's expected of them, it's a natural motivator for them to do well. And that includes snacks. Um, typically my kids get two snacks a day, like a morning snack and an evening snack, and they know that those are coming at certain times. And so those are markers for them and it keeps them from constantly asking or complaining about, about being hungry. They know that um, they can look forward to it. So, and then to touch on routine versus rhythm. 
Um, as I have said, I love a good schedule and keeping a schedule, <laughs> but it doesn't always serve our family well. It doesn't take much for us to get off track when we're being a slave to the clock. So <clears throat> it again creates an anxious environment and then relationships tend to suffer in that. So I try to, instead of following a super strict schedule, um, instead of following a super strict schedule, but create rhythms for my family. So for example, when my children wake up for the day, they know that they need to get dressed, they need to brush their teeth, they need to make their beds, and they need to have breakfast and sit down for school. That's just our natural flow that we have. We don't necessarily have a time that that needs to be done by. We just know that that's what happens. That's the flow of our morning. It does tend to be the same most days, um, but it is a rhythm in our home as opposed to a rigid routine. And then the last thing that I wanna to talk to you guys about is probably the most important, and that is rest. And when I say rest, I do mean, I mean it in a few different ways. I do mean physical rest. You need sleep. We all need sleep. Mom, dad, grandparents, whoever it is that is schooling the children and managing the home, you need rest. So plan for that. Go to bed on time by uh, planning backwards, like I mentioned earlier. Um, but what I also mean by rest is trusting that God's got this. <laughs> he knows the situation that you're in. He knows the circumstances that you're under. And by giving God over my days, my minutes, my schedule, I know that he is going to yield more fruit than I could ever do on my own. That even when I'm a mess, which I am all the time, and even when I'm not enough, which is all the time, and even if I mess up every day, which I do, um, it's my job just to offer what I can and his job to finish what I cannot. Rest is waking up and immediately asking him what it is that he wants of me today. And then working diligently towards that, knowing that he promises to guide me through that and bless me and my family. For me, <clears throat> I know that if I start to get careless and lazy, I'm not resting in him. I know that if I start to grow controlling and anxious, I'm not resting in him. I know that when I'm weary and tired, I've forgotten his grace, and I'm not resting in him. So for every single moment of our days in raising and teaching our children, even when it's just for this short season right now, for most of you, um, that is made holy when we do it for him. And I can tell you from experience that without him, it is pointless. These seemingly mundane moments <laughs> in the middle of a mundane week where it's very much like Groundhog's Day, right? <laughs> feels like we're doing the same thing over and over again, the same struggles over and over again. When we're able to pause and represent Jesus to our family, that becomes holy ground and that's where we meet Jesus. So I wanna give you guys a quote from one of my favorite books by Cindy Rollins. Um, she says, perhaps our roles as caretakers just give the Holy Spirit ample scope to humble us and remind us how little we know, and how very little we control. That is so good, right? Uh, and then one more scripture for you guys before we go. Um, I have different uh, seasons in my life where I make a habit of writing down scriptures on little cards and hanging them around my house. And to be honest, I, I haven't done it in a while. And when I was creating these notes, I... Um, I, I really felt like I should, I should hang this one up in my house because this is a great reminder for me right now. So I'm sure it's a great reminder for you guys right now. But Deuteronomy 6, 5 through 7 says, You must love the Lord your God with all your heart, all your soul, and all your strength. And you must commit yourselves wholeheartedly to these commands that I'm giving you today. Repeat them again and again to your children. Talk about them when you're at home and when you're on the road, when you're going to bed, and when you're getting up. It's pretty clear, right? Um, so I hope that that was helpful to somebody. If you have any questions or need prayer, please reach out. We would love to do that with you. So let me pray before we go. 
Father, I thank you so much for everybody that is watching this right now. I pray for all the families that have found themselves in these unusual circumstances and happen to be home with um, all of their children or possibly their whole families. And I just pray, um, I pray that they would seek after you in each and every single day and that you would bless their families with their time together, um, with their academics, of course, but with their relationships within their families. Um, I thank you, Father, for the opportunity to be able to reach people, um, even when we're all stuck at home right now. I thank you so much. Amen. All right, guys, I'll see you later. Bye.